and eventually it became law. Much of what is in the law right now is what was written by us, sponsored by us, and defended by us. Is this part of a, uh, an idea that we should have a preferential right for the poor? Yes, of course. This is exactly what we want to do. And it should not be just in the law. It should also be in the ordinary discourse of life. It should be things that people will understand on a daily basis. So it is not just agrarian reform. It should be in every other important part of ordinary life. Let us try to bring the law into an ordinary person's activities, his needs, his desires. This is what is important. It is not as important as what lawyers tend to think are important. No, it is far more important than that. It is not just the practice of law. It is not what we are doing in our daily activities as lawyers. In fact, one of the things that I would like to see is more people getting involved in the law as a part of their daily life. For instance, napapansin po ninyo. And again, we will go back to the question of language. Nag-aalala po ako ng nangyayari sa ating bayan ay nagkakaroon tayo ng parang dalawang lingwahe in the law. Ano po yan? English, which is used by our justices, by our lawyers, by our courts, and then Filipino, which is used by everybody else. We should start doing something about this dichotomy that we are now accepting as a fact. I think it is important that we bring the law into the lives of ordinary people, and we cannot do it in a foreign language. We cannot do it in a foreign language. Let us keep in mind that already we are 100,000 Filipinos, 100 million Filipinos. We are 12th largest in the world in population. And yet every municipal or trial court that you go to, you will have court interpreters. Why court interpreters? Isn't this supposed to be courts in the Philippines? And yet we have to have somebody to interpret to the ordinary applicant for the law, the language that is used by courts and yet is foreign to applicants. I am a little worried that because of this, the law becomes separate from the lives of ordinary people when it should be completely a part, a part of the lives of ordinary people. Thank you, Mr. Congressman. You know, when in the course of the interviews, most of the questions that we get always ask, what's in it for me? And you're talking about the common Tao. So they would want to hear specifics. You know, uh, how far with a proposal are you saying that we should conduct our trials in Filipino? and no longer in English, in order to make, they say, justice accessible to the poor? No, I don't think that we can do this overnight, Madam. Clearly, the Supreme Court has already seen the benefits of using Filipino in courts. In fact, there have been studies. I have read one dated 2008 about one such study. But you will clearly have to provide for a transition of some sort. Five, six years, ten years, I don't know. There are experts who can provide us the wisdom, the facilities for that. 
but clearly we cannot be understood right now by the ordinary people. Everybody who has been interviewed here is being asked through Twitter um, requests that people start talking in Tagalog, people start using Filipino. And I think at some point we have to face that reality. We are divorcing ourselves from the ordinary run of Filipino conversation. And is that a good thing to see? No, it is not. It is not. Clearly, we have to start reaching out. And we can, if we can do it in our own language, why shouldn't we? You've articulated what you feel is a priority. So in the making justice accessible to the poor, it's something that they should be able to relate with. But let's move on to something that perhaps you're more familiar with. You stated that the judiciary's budget is just a little, about 1% of the national budget. What would then be your priority if you become Chief Justice? Given the limited budget that is given to the judiciary, what would be the first reform or program that you would be willing to spend on in order to address the needs in the administration of justice? We'll first get more money, madam. Clearly, money doesn't solve everything, but it helps. And why shouldn't it help? You have courts in Metro Manila where in some cities you have first class courts with computers, with real facilities, with functioning air conditioning, for one thing, with real benches. And then you have courts in other cities, and they are really third world courts. I've seen better courts in places that you don't really go just for tourism purposes. Why is this? Why can we not have the kind of standards that will fit everybody? Why can we not have the kind of judicial halls that are not just a benefit to ordinary people, but a source of pride so that people will say, Tingnan ninyo mga korte namin. Talaga pag tayo ay nagsasabi na sila ay nagbibigay ng katarungan, o tingnan naman, ninyo, tingnan naman ninyo kung hindi talaga kaya natin to. But you cannot do it with the kind of money that we have. Why is this important? Well, clearly because there are people who can help, like myself. I've been in Congress for almost 30 years. In the, um, since the Constitution was uh, enacted in 1986, I have run in six elections and have won them all. In short, I am familiar with the systems of Congress If I were to help get the Supreme Court to be listened to, then can I do it? Yes, I can do it. Can I get people to say, baka naman si Mr. Chief Justice ay makakatulong para maintindihan naman namin kung ano talaga ang pinaglalagyan namin ng pera? Baka naman po. Baka naman yun ang magawa ni Congressman Samora. Ako ang tingin ko po, if we are able to double within the next two or three years our budget, then you will see tremendous improvements in the dispensation of justice in our country. That is one thing that we can do, and we must do regardless of what happens to me. You are 67 years of age, yes. as stated in your PDS. That would leave you roughly three years in the court. 
you think you will be able to accomplish what you seek to accomplish? I think you can make a real start. You can start in doing a few things, like getting better budgets. You can start in looking at the internal problems of trial courts. And in the last few days, one of the advantages or disadvantages of being one of the last in line is that practically everything that has to be said in the way of reforms has already been said. And I don't really need to repeat them for you, but you've heard most of them. You've heard about proposals that we take a look at judicial affidavits rather than the ordinary affidavits that we get. You've heard the possibility of using more extensively um, mediation and um, um, judicially um, supervised forms of uh, mediation and compromise. These can all be done. There have been already so many proposals. By now, your ears are probably stuffed with every proposal that is possible. It only shows that people are serious about the system of review and interview that we have uh, institutionalized. It is good that people prepare, because this time it is not just a question of who among the JBC do you know. It is more a question of what can you actually bring? What can you actually say? What can you actually propose? I think that is a good development that we should welcome. Are there many other things? Yes, of course, ma'am. It is important that we take a look not just at money, not just at methods. Let us take a look at technology. I am constantly surprised by so many pieces of paper being brought in to our halls. Why not start using small stuff? Like, for instance, a small iPad. What will this contain? Well, it has the facility to contain 